Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Monday. It is January 25th. Hey, Sarah. Hey, happy Monday. Um, I know everyone's experienced this. You're scrolling through your Facebook feed and all of a sudden you see cute Airbnbs at affordable prices in, in like so-and-so location because that's what I was Googling. Right, you, you were know? just searching it. It, it it's, it's always amazing. It's almost like it's reading our thoughts, right? It's terrifying. So there's a privacy shortcut that apparently has probably been there, but it's become the thing over the weekend. I mean, it went wildfire. It was like, Facebook is tracking us and here's what you need to do to stop it. So <laughs> it, it turns out it's it's actually true. They And it's not gonna be a surprise. I mean, that's no. how they're targeting some of their ads. but. To many of us, this may seem very intrusive, and how to fix it is actually quite simple. It is. So we, if you go to ksat.com, we have step-by-step -step how to fix it. First thing you have to do is go to your phone settings, uh, your settings and privacy in your settings in your iPhone or actually, any kind of phone. Actually, correction, Sarah, it's huh? not in your phone. It's in your Facebook app. Oh, it's, in, it's your settings in your Facebook app itself, oh, not your phone. Yeah, this is why I OK, this yep. is why so, I couldn't figure it out. I'm not going to lead you astray. So here's how it goes. folks. <laughs> it's actually very simple. So you like if you're on the app right now, scroll down to where you would log out and it says settings, privacy, shortcuts, etc. Click on settings and then scroll down and you're going to see a part where it says under your Facebook information off Facebook activity. You click on that and you can click on manage your off Facebook activity. And that is where you would be prompted to manage future activity. And there you could switch it off. They I won't be doing any more tracking from there. I literally, while you were reading it, did took those steps and just turned it off. You do need, to, right, so you do need to turn, you put your password in though. You do have to put your password in. So remember in your password. Because they want to make sure it's you. So you, that's how you, you limit the off Facebook activity from here on out. Then what you want to do is you want to back up and go back to that same area and right underneath it says clear history, disconnect off Facebook activity history from your account. Do that too. If that was too slow for you, we have an instructional video on <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> We do on all of this. So it actually sounds pretty simple, but uh, I mean, it actually sounds maybe a little complicated, but it's actually quite simple. But you're doing it again within Facebook itself. You are adjusting one of the big settings there as far as your privacy. And uh, Facebook is saying, well, you can do it, but that means that uh, a lot of the ads are going to be a little less personal. But I think for many of us, this is kind of a, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do this. This is yeah. one less thing I, I mean, want Facebook to Sometimes tabs it's on. nice when you, that, you know, random jacket that you were looking for just pops up on your Facebook yeah. home feed, but privacy is a good thing too. It is. Well, again, all this info on ksat.com. Here's today's 9 at 9. The House is expected to deliver the impeachment article against former President Donald Trump to the Senate today, formally launching trial proceedings. The former president is charged with incitement of insurrection after he urged his supporters to march to the Capitol. Roughly 5,000 National Guard members will remain in D.C. until March. Troops will be providing assistance with security, communications, medical evaluation, logistics, safety support to state, district, and federal agencies. President Joe Biden is expected to lift the ban on transgender people in the military early this week. Former President Trump instituted the ban after announcing it in a 2017 tweet. Over the weekend, U.S. passed 25 million COVID-19 cases, 5 million of them since January 1st. Now, President Joe Biden issued a new travel ban as variants of the virus from South Africa and the U.K. spread around the world. Local health officials reported 289 new cases of COVID-19, a significant drop from the past few weeks. 16 more deaths were reported. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the drop in cases is likely due to a delay in the city receiving test results from the state. SpaceX launching a record number of satellites into orbit. The company's Falcon 9 rocket carried 143 satellite devices to space. Mission and part of SpaceX's new rideshare business strategy to make regularly scheduled launches carrying batches of small satellites rather than single large payloads. A new study says there's been a 25% decline in the number of wild bee species over the past few decades. Researchers say climate issues, foreign species, and loss of habitat might explain the decline. 
Apple reportedly working on a new virtual reality headset. It'll be mainly used as an augmented reality device like Sony's PlayStation virtual reality and Oculus systems. Miley Cyrus will be performing at this year's Super Bowl's TikTok tailgate show. The TikTok tailgate show is at 1.30 p.m. before the Super Bowl game on February 7th. That's today's 9 at 9. And that uh, big headliner for the Super Bowl is The weekend. The weekend, yes, it's gonna be awesome. I just updated David Sears' phone and I thought I was all fancy and confident and I still was like, wait, did I do this right? <laughs> it took a minute, but we got it, we got it figured I out. I love how Mark's the go-to guy now. I am, I, now I've gotta work on Justin's stuff, but I can't, I can't do it right <laughs> now. He said that would mess some other things up. Oh. Uh, it's so complicated these days, but hey, it, David's happy you, you guys did a great job over there. It was a better process. <laughs> <laughs> Outside, we've got clearing skies. It's a beautiful morning now. We had a frontal boundary come through. 64 degrees north northwesterly winds at about 12 miles per hour. Look at the dew point down to 44. That's important. Drier air is moving in. It's going to be a much different day than what we experienced over the weekend. In fact, we're expecting to get into the mid 70s later this afternoon, so it will be a warm one. Uh, let's take a look at the satellite and radar. We did have a couple of showers with this front, but really nothing of great significance for us here in San Antonio. There are some showers and storms as you get farther up uh, I-35 and off to our north and east. But starting to see the clearing, Hill Country, you're in the clear now. It's still going to take a little while longer for some of our southeastern counties to get into the sun. 59 degrees, Bernie Sage 62, Boulevardi 64, Randolph 65, Stinson. Uh, again, feels a lot better out there now that the humidity is gone. But all that humidity over the weekend, look what it did to the mold numbers. 11,500, it jumped into the very high category. And on top of that, Mountain Cedar is still high at 2,140. Again, your forecast today, Texas up to about 76 for high. Northwesterly winds will be gusty, 10 to 15 miles per hour during the afternoon hours. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Top stories we're following today. A man's recovering in the hospital after he was grazed by a bullet during an argument over a dog. Police tell us it happened around 1045 last night, the 2200 block of Hicks Avenue. That's on the city's east side. Police say officers responded to a disturbance call earlier in the night when the argument orig originally started. Police say when officers left, the neighbor returned with a gun. Officers say at the some point the man fired at the victim grazing him in the head. Suspect drove off, but officers say he will face aggravated assault charges. Well, happening today, UTSA will hold a virtual groundbreaking experience for its School of Data Science and National Security Collaboration Center building. The $90 million project is the first in a series of projects planned at the university and is scheduled to be completed by July of 2022. The 167,000 square foot building Six stories in all, one of the only ones in the country where higher education, industry, and government partners collaborate under one roof and will further propel UTSA to earn national recognition as a research-intensive institution. The virtual groundbreaking is today at 10 o'clock on Zoom. In your morning headlines today, the impeachment of former President Donald Trump formally begins and President Joe Biden ready to sign more executive orders. And a hero neighbor saving a family from a fire in our Animal Kingdom segment. Well, it's getting too cute. David Sears is here. Good morning, David. Good morning. Yeah, we got some cute stuff for you to start your week off on the right foot. But first, let's start with this. Members of the House of Representatives expected to deliver, deliver articles of impeachment against former President Donald Trump to the Senate this evening at 6 o'clock our time. Now, the move means the impeachment trial of the former president has formally begun. Although the articles will be delivered, the trial won't actually begin for a couple of weeks. Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Minority Leader Mitch McConnell agree to delay the start of the trial until February 9th. That'll give Trump two weeks to prepare a defense and the House impeachment managers time to also prepare their case. They will be trying to prove the president committed incitement of insurrection. President Joe Biden expected to sign more executive orders today. One of them is designed to increase American manufacturing by purchasing goods and services from American companies. This was another campaign promise. The order says the administration will use tax money for federal projects like infrastructure on American companies. Biden claims that will create more jobs. Former President Trump had a similar order to that. A hero neighbor saving a family from their burning townhome in Washington, D.C. Those flames. George Totornu saw the flames in the garage from across the street. He put on his house shoes and ran over to the house 
to see what he could do. As the fire got worse, the former Army linguist banged on the door while the flames started to hit the windows and the doors. The grandfather came to the door, so then Totornu ran and got into the house and was able to get the grandmother and twin toddlers out of the house just in time. I was just thinking about how the kid doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, it took about 85 firefighters to get the fire under control and keep it from spreading to other townhomes. It looks like an electrical problem started the fire in the garage. The house has over $2 million in damage. The car destroyed. The grandparents and babies are all okay, though. All right, start your Monday off with a little cuteness first. This is baby giant panda hanging on to the zookeeper's leg. Don't let me go. This is from a zoo in South Korea. So far, more than 4 million have viewed it. On YouTube, we make a few thousand more. Fu Bo, the first Chinese giant panda born in South Korea. Too cute. All right, now we want you to meet Victor. That would be the leatherback turtle getting released back into the ocean off the Florida Keys after suffering an injury. Victor has been in the turtle hospital since December with a damaged flipper. He was the first leatherback turtle to be admitted to that turtle hospital in the Keys. While he was recovering, he was fed, and get this, a gelatin mix of fish oil, fresh mahi-mahi, baby cereal, French bread, and vitamins. He also feasted on some live jellyfish. So when they released Victor, they let him go where there would be plenty of jellyfish to munch on. When he was let go, he weighed about two pounds. When he's an adult, he'll weigh about 2,000 pounds. That's a lot of jellyfish. Oh, that was like that? filet mignon for a leatherback Little turtle, right? <laughs> That's pretty good stuff. He was cute. Oh, mm -hmm. my gosh. Just keep swimming, Victor. You can do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no problem with Victor. All right, coming up in a few minutes. I mean, I know you'll tease it, but we got some sports from the weekend. A little bit of sports. Not that just, weekend. Just a little bit. Weekend. Thank you, David. Right now, it's 909, 65 degrees. Here's a sports David was talking about Spurs to football. It was a big weekend in sports. Later on GMSA, the highlights on the games. NFL giving out free tickets to 7,500 vaccinated healthcare workers and still, kill, still get involved in the KSAT Book Club. We have details on that on What's Up KSAT. Hey, good morning. I'm Max Massey. A lot of local groups are stepping up and helping out those in need, giving out blessing bags. Take a look. <clears throat> I'm going to explain right after the break. And stocks are down 126 points, 30,870. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATdeals.com. Now this next deal will help you to create those flawless pictures every time. And we are gonna give it a try today. This home streaming studio by Aduro Ustream Lite is here to help you upgrade the quality of your photos and videos. Now right now we have the ring light focused on me and I'm gonna turn this one on. There you go, it's as simple as that. Turns on via remote to help you make your Zoom meetings perfect and your selfies flawless. They have three lighting options. White warm yellow and warm white so you always have the perfect light 10 levels of brightness an adjustable tripod comes with it along with the remote control and a non-slip rubber rubber grip to securely hold your phone while streaming now don't worry about batteries it is USB powered the retail price $99 the case at deals price $49.99 that is a 50% discount you can find this deal and many more case at deals.com Just about 9.15, the pandemic has had a huge impact on the economy around the country and, of course, here at San Antonio. But through it all, we've seen groups to come together and help out. Our Max Massey joins us live downtown with a group doing exactly that. Good morning, Max. What's going on? What's going on out there? Good morning, guys. We have groups from Western Properties giving out these. They are blessing bags. There's a lot in there. They're actually kind of heavy. We're joined here. The president of Western Properties, Mona Mitchell. So, Mona, here you go. Take Thank us through you. it. What exactly is in these bags? Well, there's a lot. There's hygiene products. There's a toothbrush, comb. There's food products. Uh, there's socks. The main thing that people ask for are socks. Um, just a variety of deodorant, soap, things like that. So how did you guys get these blessing bags started? Well, it was actually an idea of one of our tenants. Um, they wanted to do something for the homeless. They felt um, an urge. They, they didn't know what to do. And um, they were at a light one day and they saw homeless people, but they weren't comfortable, you know, with just opening their window. So then the tenants came up with the idea of making these bags. 
And how can people help out? Well, there's multiple ways. Um, we have a GoFundMe account on Weston Center's Facebook page. You can do that. You can make a donation. You can bring in product if you want. We had um, one gentleman, he brought in 50 boxes filled with deodorant, or you can bring water, whatever, or you can actually make the bags. Uh, the other thing you could do is you can come out with us. Come out and minister to the homeless, which is, you know, we need volunteers. We have um, a certain group of people that go out with us on a regular basis, but we can always have more people. We found uh, Melissa who brings tamales every day, uh, I mean every Monday when we go out, and uh, she found us on Facebook. Fantastic. You guys actually started this idea before the pandemic even hit. Yes. Um, actually, so we had a steering committee. They wanted to um, talk about what we could do with the blessing bags, and they were on fire to do this. They decided they wanted to do a building competition. I oversee the management and leasing of Weston Center, which is a 32-story office building. There's 1,400 people in the building. And so what happened was they said, let's have a contest. Let's see <laughs> how many boxes that we can fill, and every floor will fill so many file boxes, and then they'll win the contest. We'll take all the product, and we'll make these blessing bags. Fantastic. And I said, well, what are we going to do with the bags? I thought we would just leave them at the courtesy desk. You could pick it up. Put in your car. If you saw a homeless person handed out, and they said, oh, "No, we want to go out." I said, "You want to go out?" I said, "Yeah, we want to go out. We want to go out at lunch." We want to go out for I said, "Okay," but then the pandemic hit, gotcha. and everything came to a stop. Yeah. Well, you guys are doing amazing things, and we actually we saw you guys already hand out several of the bags, even walking over here to the plaza. So you're going to be here all morning long, and we're going to be checking back in with our viewers at 9:30. We're going to be talking to some volunteers. Guys, back to you. Max Massey live downtown. Thank you very much, Max. Well, when Sarah and I came to work this morning, it was really muggy outside. Things have changed since then, haven't they, Justin? Yeah, it looks like the sun came out a little bit. It has. It's changed in a big way. Cold front came through, guys. It's going to make a huge difference today as far as the dew points are concerned. Not really with the temperatures. In fact, it's going to be warmer this afternoon with all the sun. Let's take a look at the time lapse. This is pretty incredible. So you were just talking about this, Mark. This is earlier this morning. It's damp. It's sort of foggy. It's cloudy. Watch what happens as we go forward in time. There was the front right there. You could actually pick it up. Visibility almost instantly got better. We saw the northwesterly winds kick in. Clouds shift out. There's the sun. And now we're off to a beautiful start. 64 degrees right now at the airport. North northwesterly winds at about 12. Dew point is down to 44. Let's take a look at the dew point history here. We were in the 60s almost all morning. Then the front hit. We went from 65 the degree dew point all the way down to 44. And that's where we are now. So the air dried out uh, very, very quickly. You see the dew points across the western half of the viewing area in the 30s and 40s. Out ahead of the front, we still got 60s and 70s. Uh, it's still a, a very sharp dividing line here. Now this will spread east and we'll get drier air into all of South Texas by this afternoon. Temperature wise, we're sitting in the mid 60s here in town. Some 70s off to the east, 71 Gonzales, 72 Bebo, where it's very humid, but drier, clear skies in temperatures in the 50s for the hill country. There's a look at the winds. So far, not too, too bad. We're looking at winds anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour. They will get a little bit gusty, I think, for our time today. And the Futurecast wind gust show maybe gusts up to around 30 miles per hour up there around Rock Springs and Kerrville. I think we could see some gusts 20, 25 here in San Antonio. But as we get into the afternoon, the wind should lighten up. And by tonight, we'll see lighter winds, which will contribute to some cold temperatures by your Tuesday morning. Here's the satellite picture. And uh, you can see there are, there are still some clouds here across Bear County. We're not completely done with the clouds just yet, but you get west of town. It is almost completely clear up there around Kerrville and Lakey, and then still quite a bit of cloud cover down to the south and east as this front progresses off to the east. Look at the line of st storms with this. There are some stronger storms up here across parts of northeast Texas some mornings earlier as uh, this line is probably going to produce a little bit more severe weather today as it works its way down I-20. We just missed out on it. We were too far to the south. And then on the northern side of this, a ton of snow, places like Nebraska, Kansas, they're going to get uh, some huge snowfall tolls. Take a look at this computer model showing they can see up to a foot, if not more, of snow in places like Lincoln and Omaha. So some big issues up there. For us, it's sun. It's beautiful weather. We're going to be up around 76 degrees today. Northwest early winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then going into tomorrow, 73, mostly sunny. We are expecting a front late Tuesday night into early Wednesday. That creates some breezy conditions and cooler conditions on Wednesday. 66, 61 Thursday. We'll get close to freezing, by the way, Thursday morning. Some high clouds Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 
It's a little less sun. Uh, and as we get into the weekend, Saturday looks mostly cloudy. But we've got another front that clears us out for Sunday. You'll notice there is no rain in the seven day forecast. We went from a, a sort of a wet pattern to a dry pattern, guys. Justin, I noticed that 34 in there. Mike had it, I think, at 38 this morning. So mm -hmm. things are getting a little cooler maybe later in the week. Potentially Thursday morning. I think that's the one morning we have to watch for uh, freezing the hill country and then we'll get close here in San Antonio. Or we just go with 36 and split the difference. There you yeah. go. <laughs> I like that number better. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Right now, 921, 66 degrees. Still head on GMSA at 9, a teenager who lost parts of his hands during a firework explosion is speaking out about what happened, why the family says there needs to be more awareness about the dangers of fireworks. It was a story we first brought to you exactly three weeks ago. A street racing meetup at the Eisenhower flea market on San Antonio's northeast side turned into a fireworks disaster with two young men losing limbs and fingers. One of those victims was 19 year old Michael Sexton. Michael and his mother met with me to talk about how this accident changed his life in a split second. Yeah, Sarah, we started talking about this story on the early edition of GMSA today. We understand Michael was there because he loves cars. Mm -hmm. His friends invited him out there. What was his experience with fireworks prior to this? It was his first time around fireworks, mm -hmm. he told me. You know, he and his mother said that they are from California, and I used to live in California. The California firework laws are very, very strict compared to Texas and other states. And Michael said he wasn't used to being around all those fireworks. He said he didn't even know a lot of people at this street racing meetup. He just likes cars. He was there. He said it was three days after New Year's Eve. People started throwing up fireworks and he was standing next to another young man um, who was holding a firework mortar, one of those rockets that explodes in the air. Well, that young man holding it didn't know it had been previously lit. Now, Michael was standing next to that guy and he, Michael tells me the guy turned to him and said, hey, do you have a lighter? And the next thing Michael knew is that that firework exploded in both of their faces. That other young man holding that firework mortar lost both of his hands. It was a video uh, that went viral on social media. Someone actually posted a video of that horrific accident. Um, so when we were out there, I was out there that morning, that Monday morning covering this story. And I mean, it was it was a horrific accident. You could still see all of the firework, uh, the firework debris in the parking lot, puddles of blood in the parking lot. I didn't even want to look in you know, those those puddles that I was out there with my photographer, Timmy, and I was like, uh, don't don't go near them because people lost their hands in this accident. Michael lost several fingers. Um, he's going to have hopefully not permanent eye eyesight damage in one of his eyes. And the surgeons told him at BAMC, you know, that's a military hospital. And they said, look like this is an accident we don't see you know, here in the U.S. We see this out on the battlefields. It looked like a combat injury. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were telling him they have, he has several pins in his hands. Um, they told him, we don't know if you're going to have feeling in your hands, if you'll ever have hand function again, because they don't know what that damage will look like, that nerve damage, until those bandages come off. Well, he's learned a pretty tough lesson in a very quick way. Um, Sarah, he's faced a lot of backlash on social media about what happened. Why did he choose to speak out to you about his experiences? Well, I think it just shows that we're all human, right? All of us make mistakes, and he was very honest about that, and so was his mother. Uh, they talked about, you know, he's definitely learned from this experience. Um, it's changed his perspective, and he wanted people to know, look, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a great idea to be around fireworks, but I've learned my lesson, and I wanted to tell my story rather than people on the Internet saying all these negative and hurtful things about us. So also coming up today on our 6 p.m. newscast, we have an, we bring you Michael's story, his full story again, but we also go more into the firework laws and restrictions in states around the country. All right, thank you, Sarah. 928 right now, 66 degrees. There is more ahead on GMSA at 9. Well, the Poteet Strawberry Festival is back, but it's going to be different because of the pandemic. Our Erica Hernandez has the details and more in today's What's up, KSAT? Spurs had a big win last night. Uh, good night for DeJounte Murray, too. We have highlights plus more coming up in our sp sports chat.
Well, the Super Bowl 55 is now set and will feature two superstar quarterbacks. And Spurs bounce back after two losses, beat the Wizards. David and RJ here to break down the weekend sports. Good morning, gentlemen. What's going on? Morning. What's going on with you? Weekend, huh? Everybody good? Everybody happy? It, We're good. It was a busy weekend. Some people happy. If yeah, you're a Packers busy. fan, not so happy, not, probably. Not so happy. <laughs> no, if you're a Bills fan, <laughs> not so much. happy. Yeah. Are there any Bills fans? In yeah, there good are. There? are there? There's I think be. they hang out at uh, Anchor Bar. I think that's kind of where, where they... Mm, that's, that's you're like, right, you're the, right. That is The Buffalo of, contingent yeah. hangs out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Super Bowl 55, now I, set, good to go, and we have a great matchup here. Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady... Doesn't get any better than that. Tom Brady, 43 years old. Uh, Patrick Mahomes' dad is 50. So that's <laughs> how long uh, Tom Brady's been around. And Patrick Mahomes, what, 25? Uh, yes. Wow. So this is that, that's going to be a great matchup. To, it, but will the young displace the old? Ooh. That's yeah. the question. It is, is it time to uh, pass the torch? Of course, this we'll year, see. I mean, who, uh -huh. who can count out Tom Brady at this point? The guy's had a miraculous season. After, and especially after what he did yesterday. We were talking about this earlier. He just, he, he kind of crumbled the Saints, and then he kind of crumbled the Packers. He wasn't, he wasn't playing defense or anything, but there's just this mental thing when you go up against a Tom Brady team. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just amazing to watch. I mean, mm -hmm. they had a chance at the end to win this thing, but they decided to go for a field goal and, and instead, of the, uh, instead of a touchdown. And even on a third down, yeah. Aaron Rodgers could have run it and got close, if not in. But, I mean, just these Tom Brady let in. This guy threw three interceptions in a row. He did. And in a was, row. This was a big that, turning that point was, in the game right there. One second left in the first half. Green Bay, for some reason, allows the receiver to get behind him. Uh, Packers, though, as you mentioned, David, uh, made this a game. They came back, uh, cut it down to five. But, uh, yeah, they, I don't know what it is. Tom Brady, he's got 14 conference championship appearances now. Look at this. Let's go. Run, run, run. You, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Everybody in the stands yeah. was telling him to run. Yeah. I was telling him to run. I was screaming at home, and he didn't hear me. Oh, and, and here is the, uh, yeah, yeah, that was the what, holding call yeah. that uh, pretty much ended the game We there. could get into that. We could get into bad calls all day. Because they <laughs> spent the whole game saying, well, we're, we're, uh, we're going to let him play. Yeah. And then they called that one. And they called, yeah, well, they're going to let him play up to a certain point. Yeah. Right. So, so but, Tampa Bay wins this one 31-26. Three interceptions, three possessions in a row. In the and they still came out with it. Yeah, they, they still came out with score. it. Tom Brady, amazing. Ten Super Bowl so. appearance. And uh, we talked about the Ten. Chiefs here. Chiefs versus Bills. Uh, check out some of these highlights. Early on, Bills looking like they were going to possibly maybe steal this one. But, uh, yeah, no, never mind. Patrick Williams. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? <laughs> He's just really good. Um, you knew it wasn't going to be good when the guy clanged the extra point off the upright. No, definitely not. It wasn't going to be a good um, day for the Bills. Amazing thing about Mahomes, though, he's he's got turf toe, so we yeah, know that he's hurt. Didn't tell. He's didn't practice all week because he had uh -huh. the cold concussion. He still comes out, throws for 300 and, like, 20 yards, three touchdowns. Here's here's the thing about it, though. Yes, look at that little yeah. – they just, they just are creative. They come up with all kinds of fun stuff. So that's going to give Tampa Bay some fits, I think, is, is their creativity. But the good thing for Mahomes – is he didn't have to run the ball very much yesterday, so he didn't take a he, – he, I mean, he got hit a couple of times. Yeah. But coming – I mean, I was like – I was scared for him every time he, he was like – had the ball because I was like, don't get hit, don't get hit. Now he's got two more weeks to recover from mm -hmm. the concussion and all that. I mean, he was cleared to play and everything, but still – you know, you want him as about as 100% as he could possibly get for this game because he's oh, yeah. going to need it all the way. Teams Oof. play against Brady. Yeah, so. should be a good one there. Yep. Should be a good one. Now, as David mentioned, two weeks from now, I think right now the Chiefs are favored by three so early on. So. Oh, and they're playing in Tampa. Hey. Mm -hmm. Go figure. <laughs> the home game for Tampa the Bucs. Bay. Tampa speaking, Bay. speaking of home, the Spurs finally won a home game. They're not exactly taking advantage of home court advantage, but this is a – COVID time, so nobody is around the NBA. But, man, they finally got a good game going yesterday. Yeah, they definitely did. And this was uh, one of those games that the Spurs needed to have. Washington had, like, eight guys that were in the health and safety protocol. Yeah. So they hadn't played a game in two weeks. The Spurs had lost that tough one against the Mavericks on Friday. Look at Jakob shooting the long The longest <laughs> shot he's ever made as a spur right there. That was it. He's not made a shot longer than that as a spur. Yeah, Justin makes that in his sleep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. figure that. Go, go get that one. That guy right there, DeJounte Murray, triple-double. 11 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists last night. So that's his second triple-double of the season. Lonnie Walker had a good game. They were struggling in the first half. And why they keep getting down in the first quarter is, is that's the mystery. The Spurs always find themselves down 8, 10 in the first. Remember against Dallas 
Luka Doncic had 19 in the first yeah. quarter. We don't want to talk about that, though. We'll talk about the Spurs <laughs> and the big win last night. And now they go on the road, and then they come back they play home tonight. Yeah. for five. So they're on the road tonight. Yeah, yeah they're playing tonight against the Pelicans in New Orleans. Uh, yeah. Real quick stat on DeJounte Murray. He is the first Spur to have multiple triple doubles since 1994, David Robinson. Wow. So pretty impressive stuff from there uh, DJ there. So that was a good win. That was a good win last night. LaMarcus Aldridge had a good night. They had seven guys in double figures last night. So... Well-rounded. Against a rusty Washington Wizards. Well but we're going to accentuate the positive, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're not going to worry. Okay. It's Monday. So if if I'm positive. keeping it too real, let me know. <laughs> Thanks, RJ. David, thank you. Thanks, Mark. 937 outside with live cam. Back to Justin looking ahead to what's turning out to be a pretty nice day after all. Yeah, beautiful. Hey, you guys lay off my boy Jakob, okay? Uh, it is... <laughs> It is going to be a beautiful day. We've got a frontal boundary that has come through. Winds are going to pick up out of the northwest, and temperatures are going to be really pretty nice. You can pick out the front very clearly here on the visible satellite and radar. Right there around Gonzales, that thin line of cloud cover, and then a thin line of showers that stretches from Gonzales over towards Howitzville. So if we're going to see any rain around the area this morning, it will be with this front. We are seeing a few showers around Nixon, and I think we could see a few sprinkles, maybe a shower or two around Howitzville within the hour. And then once that's through, we're done with the rain. 59 Bernie State, 60 Tarpley, 60 in Hondo, 65 down there at Stinson. And the pollen count today, want to show it again because it's not good. Mold's in the very high category, 11,500. Mount Cedar is high at 2,140. Your forecast, breezy through, I'd say about 2, 3 o'clock. Winds will start to die down some later this afternoon, up around 76 for a high today. Guys. Thank you very much, Justin. Well, volunteers from Western Properties out and about this morning downtown helping those in need by distributing blessing bags around town. Our Max Massey joins us live downtown. Max, what have you seen this morning? Good morning, guys. We have seen volunteers handing out dozens of these. These are the blessing bags. We've seen them pass them out to the homeless en route to the plaza and even here in the plaza. We are joined here with one of the volunteers, Terry Eva. So, morning. Terry, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Right off the bat, why did you guys start doing this? We started doing this as an opportunity to give back to um, another community within downtown, which is our homeless community. We see them um, around our property and then just around town, and we wanted to just have a chance to give back to them um, in any way that we could. You guys have been doing this for months now. What have you seen so far? We have seen relationships build. We've seen the groups become larger. Um, the people are hearing about us, they're coming out, they're uh, being ministered to. We've seen salvations come through. We've seen, um, we've actually seen some people leave the homeless community to be set up somewhere with some stable housing and things like that. Um, we have even partnered up with Central a couple of times, which they can help them with those types of things. Um, so we've just and we've just seen relationships between the volunteers and the homeless, which builds trust, you know, so that they see we're not out there for us. We're out there to actually give back to them. Awesome. All right, Terry, thank you so much. Really amazing stuff they are doing out here, guys. And if anyone is interested in helping out, we're going to have all that information, all those resources. Just head to KSAT.com. Sarah, Mark, back to you guys. Thank you, Max. 940, 66 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. From the Poteet Strawberry Festival to NFL tickets for healthcare workers, there's a lot going, there's a lot trending on KSAT.com after the break. Erica Hernandez joins us with more in today's What's Up KSAT. I-44, several stories trending on our website this morning, including the return of the Poteet Strawberry Festival. With more on that, Erica Hernandez is joining us live from home. Good morning, Erica. Good morning. Hey guys, good morning. Well, while some Fiesta events are getting canceled already for this spring, the Poteet Strawberry Festival has announced they will return in April. The Festival Association announced that despite the pandemic, the event will return in order to help nonprofit organizations, small businesses, and the local, the local strawberry farmers. In a statement to Case at 12, the association told us that they have a safety plan in place, which includes plexiglass going up on all food booths, extra sanitation stations, social distancing being implemented in entertainment areas, mask required, and the monitoring of how many people are attending. Now, last spring, the festival was canceled because of the pandemic, and as a result, the association was hit hard. The festival this year will be April 9th through 11th, and tickets are not on sale yet, but will be soon. 
Next up, the Kansas City Chiefs and Tampa Bay Buccaneers will be at the Super Bowl as well as 7,500 health care workers. The NFL announced that health care workers vaccinated for the coronavirus will be given free tickets to the Super Bowl next month. Most of the workers will be from the Tampa Bay area, but NFL teams will choose some workers from their cities to attend the game as well. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell says there will be a variety variety of special moments to honor healthcare workers in the stadium during the game. The game itself will have limited attendance to just those healthcare workers and about 14,500 other fans. But I think it's safe to say, guys, that this Super Bowl will, will look very different than once in the past. Yeah, it's going to be crazy because the stands are usually absolutely packed, even though those are probably the priciest exactly. tickets in the NFL. Yeah. I'm also curious to see how they're going to do the halftime show, if it's going to look how different that that's going to look in itself. Oh, I think all of it's going to be different. I mean, it's just a different world we're living in, right? And they only have the weekend performing, unless they're going to have a surprise okay. performer. Well, yeah. Go ahead, Erica. I think we're having a connection issue, but let's try it one more time. Go ahead, Erica. You're frozen at the moment. Uh, the Oh, we, we lost her. OK, well, yeah, um, like as we there. say She's goodbye to Erica uh, this and we welcome in Justin Horn, we do want to tell you that today is National Bubble Wrap Day. Tomorrow is National Spouses Day. Wednesday is Chocolate Cake Day and Thursday is International Lego Day. Friday, Puzzle Day, Saturday, Croissant Day and Sunday, Hot Chocolate Day. Well, there you go. That's how uh, Erica was going to wrap it up. Those are all good, too. <laughs> I like all of them. Jamie, well, can you turn your microphone off, please, ma'am? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. All right. Now we're all on the same page. <laughs> Justin, go ahead. Yeah. We're just going to jump right into weather here. <laughs> let's let's take a look at our KSA Connect picture. This is a beautiful one. You see the interesting cloud formation. This is as the front was coming through. This is about two hours ago. We saw this across San Antonio. The difference between those two air masses, between the dry air mass and the really humid and what was a damp air mass that we saw over the weekend. That was the change right there. Beautiful picture. We appreciate it as always. And look at the scene across the state. You can very easily pick out where that front is right there with a line of showers and storms out ahead of it, behind it, drier air. We're still getting a few clouds right behind the front, but I think by the afternoon we'll get completely clear skies here around the area. Temperature wise, it's not a huge cold front in the sense that it's not bringing in bitterly cold air, but it is chillier out west. 46 Midland, 40 right now in Lubbock, 36 in Amarillo. The big difference is the dew points. Uh, they're down in the 30s and 40s, and we're already feeling the, the drier air here in town. Dew point is down to 44 now. As you get out into the hill country, we're talking dew points, 20s, 30s. It's extremely dry. Out ahead of it, impressive number there. Beeville still has a dew point of 73, but that will come down too once this front makes it through. Outside, we're still looking at a little bit of cloud cover, 64 degrees. Humidity is at 48%. We've got a north northwesterly wind at about 12 miles per hour. Satellite picture shows, yes, we still do have a few clouds just right behind the front moving through San Antonio at this hour. 66 in Castroville, 61 Bernie State, 68 New Braunfels. We're looking at 54 in Rock Springs, clear skies there. 72 Kennedy, 72 in Victoria, still mostly cloudy for you. Uh, the winds, that's the other side to this. There are going to be some gusty winds behind the front. So right now we're looking at winds 10 to 15 miles per hour, perhaps gusty a little bit higher than that. And I think as we get into the uh, next couple of hours, let's say midday, we'll start to see the, these numbers increase a little bit, especially as you get up into the hill country. We could see some gusts up around 30 miles per hour. Here in San Antonio, probably some gusts 20, maybe 25. But by this evening, these winds really start to calm and we'll see lighter winds overnight. And uh, looking at the big picture here, uh, we showed you uh, this front extending down into Texas. But notice on the north side of it, there are uh, there is quite a bit of snow cover and snowfall going on. Nebraska up into parts of Kansas, and there's going to be some very heavy snow there. That's going to cause some travel issues across the country. This is going to be a big snowmaker for places like Omaha, North Platte, down to even Kansas City. They'll be right on the line there of maybe some rain and snow. And uh, this system very quickly moves east. There is a system behind this, but it doesn't look, look like it's going to do much for us. Our forecast, in fact, stays fairly dry. So here's what the forecast looks like. 76 degrees today, mostly sunny. Northwesterly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then uh, the extended forecast will go 73 tomorrow. The front, uh, another front comes through. This is a dry front, but it does pick up the winds Wednesday, 66, 61 Thursday. We'll get some high clouds on Friday, 267. Mostly cloudy for your Saturday, and then another front this weekend. 
Still no rain, though, and temperatures really pretty comfortable, guys. Thank you, Justin. 950, 66 degrees. We'll be right back. Morning. Hey, guys. Coming up on live, Nathan Fillion from The Rookie. Plus how to automate your finances for Jan. You ready to save week? See you soon <laughs> on live. We want to remind you, we've got a virtual mental health awareness town hall coming up this Wednesday, January 27th at 2 p.m. You can find out more information right now on our website at ksaccommunity.com. We understand that some people may be concerned as to whether the vaccines are safe. That's why we are dedicating an hour to the COVID-19 vaccines on Wednesday. We're looking into the science behind it, how they were developed so quickly and what they mean for the future. The vaccines ending the COVID-19 pandemic airs on Wednesday, January 27th at 7 p.m. right here on KSAT 12, KSAT.com and the KSAT TV app. All right, same day. So 2 p.m. Town Hall, 7 p.m. Special. Let's look at TransGuide right now, see how things are looking out there. There's 90 at 35, no problems to report. Justin. A few clouds out there, 65 right now. We'll see that front continue to push east out of the area. Dry area will work in. We'll see some gusty winds today, and those temperatures will eventually make it up to about 76 degrees, 73 tomorrow, and then a little cooler as we get towards midweek. All right, this final story today cracks me up. Some are calling it a cringeworthy fundraiser for the San Antonio Zoo. I love it. It's it's so savage. So the <laughs> San Antonio Zoo is helping scorned exes with its second annual Crimey a Cockroach fundraising event. Yeah, this Valentine's Day, you can purchase a live cockroach for $5 <laughs> or a frozen rat for 25 The frozen rat. And you can name it after your ex. And then they serve it up to birds, reptiles, and mammals to eat. The rats will be fed to the zoo's reptiles. So if your ex was a snake, this could be a good option. It's... <laughs> <laughs> I love the rat. So according to the zoo, if there's also a vegetarian option to feed the zoo's vegetarian animals. So if you're looking to get a little revenge on a less than stellar roommate or someone else you might have been annoyed by recently. Yeah, by the way, we're not making this stuff. This is all in the script for the for the web story that we have on it. Don't worry, you'll be able to watch the feeding frenzy because the zoo plans to showcase the Crimea cockroach event across the nonprofit social media channels coming up on Valentine's Day itself. But I just so we have a link embedded in the ksat.com article and then you also can find this on the san antonio zoo website but it's great because you go on there and it's almost like you're ordering takeout yeah. you can order <laughs> how many roaches do you want five dollars how many rats do you want 25 dollars. what would you like them to be named right and, and below it you put name of your ex you can actually <laughs> send that link to your ex while it's being oh. fed Oh, I didn't know about that part. Yeah, you can wow. send them the that link. Wow, that is savage. That's the part about it. Wow. <laughs> Not that I'm excited or anything.